Finding out what happened after something happens in the aviation space is a patient man's game. The incident that we're about to talk about today happened on the 19th of December 2021, more than three years ago. But I remember when it happened. I could not wait to find out what happened. And now we finally know. It was the 19th of December 2021. Dubai, as always, was the wide body central that it is. On that day, one specific Emirates 777 had a long journey in front of it. Most Emirates planes do. Being the stopover hub for the world means that a lot of your planes have to do some insanely long legs. This jet with 372 people on board had to make the long trek to Washington from Dubai. This meant a large crew with two sets of pilots. The first captain had a little bit of a late start to her day, reporting 10 minutes late to duty, but she quickly caught up and the briefing went off without a hitch. The first officer strapped in and started preparing the cockpit for takeoff, which is when he noticed something weird. The flight mode enunciator, or the FMA, was displaying TOGA rollout mode engaged. The FMA in this section of the primary flight display shows a quick summary of the current state of the plane. In this case, the FMA was very wrong about the plane. The first officer tried resetting the FMA, but no joy. The TOGA callout stayed right there. He made a mental note of it to bring it to his captain. They then continued on with the takeoff calculation for this takeoff. They were initially planning an intersection takeoff from Mike 13 Alpha from runway 30 right. So all the numbers had been calculated for this intersection takeoff. But that was quickly changed to Mike 14 Alpha as it would give them more runway to take off from. The numbers were re-ran and the plane lined up on the runway. At 11.09 and 43 seconds UTC, the plane began to roll down the runway. The two giant engines pushed the plane down the runway at greater and greater speeds until it hit 181 knots, and then it started to lift off into the air. The plane initially pitched up at around 10 degrees and started to climb, and then something weird started to happen. The pitch started to fall. In the cockpit, the first officer made the call positive rate and the gear was retracted. But as the rate of climb came down, so did the nose. This 777, for whatever reason, could not climb. The busy city of Dubai lay ahead of it. The captain knew that something was wrong. For this phase of flight, you'd be at about 15 degrees of pitch, but the flight director was indicating much less pitch. Even though she knew that they should be climbing faster, she opted to follow the profile that the flight director was showing her. Thoughts of what could be wrong raced through her head. Her main suspicion? The calculated weights that were given to her and the rest of the crew were wrong, and she had a much heavier plane than anticipated. As she looked outside, she could see the Dubai nightlife whisk by. The plane was dangerously low, but at least they were picking up speed. In the cockpit, the first officer shouted climb and the relief captain shouted pitch up. After all of this fighting to try to get the plane to climb, they had only gotten to an altitude of 160 feet. A tall building in their flight path could be a problem at this altitude. The captain commanded even more power from the engines in a bit to get the plane to climb, but the pitch was at 3 degrees and the plane sped up. This plane was now at risk of overspeeding and the flaps were set to 15. The plane, sensing that the flaps were about to be overloaded, retracted the flaps to five. They could barely climb, and now they didn't even have full flaps. Things were getting desperate. In the cockpit, the pilots hit the toga button, and immediately the engines roared to full power and started to finally push the jet into the dark Arabic sky. Hey, sometimes you just need to brute force it. I'm pretty sure there's a Jeremy Clarkson power quote that I could use here. But... The jet eventually climbed to its cruising altitude and the relief captain asked the captain if she needed a break. I mean, rightfully so. She was in shock. They all were on the flight deck. She responded with, it's over, it has passed, carry on. And so they turned their plane towards Washington. The relief captain stayed on the flight deck for an hour longer because he was so unnerved about what had happened. But nothing else went wrong on that flight. Hours later, Flight 231 made an uneventful landing in Washington, D.C. To understand what had happened, we need to get some terminology out of the way. The MCP, or the Mode Control Panel, gives the pilots control of the autopilot. It's the section which has the inputs for the altitude, heading, speed, etc. The AFDS, 
or the Autopilot Flight Director system, consists of three Autopilot Flight Director computers. The AFDS has multiple pitch modes, or modes which will govern how the plane will pitch. For our discussion today, we just need to be aware of two, TOGA and ALT. The thing you need to know is that when in the ALT mode, the autopilot will provide inputs to capture the altitude that is selected on the mode control panel. Remember when the plane was first turned on and the flight mode enunciator said that it was in the ALT mode? Well, this is how that happened. When the plane was turned on, the altitude was set to 0000 on the mode control panel. Since the selected altitude is within 20 feet of the plane's actual barometric altitude, the plane was at Dubai, so basically at sea level. The plane went into the ALT mode as designed. Now, the question that we have to answer is, why was the altitude on the mode control panel set to 0000? It wasn't ever fully determined, but it could have been set by a previous crew that flew the plane. You see, sometimes crews put in values like 0000 into the flight computer, values that are just obviously wrong to remind them to do certain things. For example, a crew might punch in zero into the altitude box to remind them to get the initial takeoff clearance. But for whatever reason, this value was put into the system and the first officer almost caught it. He tried to reset the system to fix the issue, but it didn't work. He wanted to bring this up to the captain, but in the hustle and bustle of the cockpit, it just didn't happen. He forgot about it. So, this meant that the plane took off with the ALT mode engaged. Meaning that when airborne, the flight director would give you instructions to capture the zero altitude when airborne. That's why the plane had such a hard time climbing after they had taken off. The pilot was following the instruction of the flight director, and the flight director wanted to take the plane down to zero. No one on the flight deck noticed this error. Why was that? This was an experienced crew, and they had considerable experience on the 777. Well, the first thing is that the captain was only taking a quick look at the primary flight displays. All the modes on the FMA was in green, so instantly, nothing stood out. Once you add in a little bit of expectation bias, all of this was quickly overlooked. But there were still opportunities for the captain to realize that her plane was in the wrong setting. For instance, the flight director pitch bar was level with the horizon when they were on the ground, instead of being about 8 degrees up. With the pressure being piled on for an on-time departure and other things like that, the pilots failed to notice this as well. Then. Once the plane was in the air, the flight director pitch down caught the captain off guard really badly. The flight director was calling for nose down inputs and the jet needed to climb. The captain decided to climb out slowly at a lower pitch angle than what was normally used. All of this caught her so badly off guard because she had formed a habit over the years. You take off, you pull back till the nose is at up around 15 degrees and then you get to a cruising altitude. In this case, the flight director was calling for something different, something that deviated from that habit that had been formed over all of those years. This is known as a scale-based error. Then, when things started to go wrong, it slowly started to snowball. You see, since the nose of the plane was being held down by the captain, with great effort, might I add, the plane was picking up speed really fast. When you're in a climb, it is hard for the speed to build like that. But with the nose down, there is no restriction like that. The plane was getting dangerously close to an overspeed warning. Adding another thing for this captain to worry about, who was already stressed to begin with. Another thing that we need to highlight here is automation complacency. The first officer knew that the plane was in the wrong mode. So why did he decide to go ahead with the takeoff? On a plane like the 777, which is packed to the gills with automation, it is very easy to get lulled into a false sense of security by the plane. You perform hundreds of takeoffs and you get a sense of safety, a sense that the plane will look out for you. Quote, given the confidence gained from positive experiences with automation systems on the aircraft type, it stands to reason that on a proven and reliable aircraft like the B777, the automation systems are designed to ensure that incorrect vertical guidance configurations, which could lead to unsafe conditions during takeoff, are not possible." End quote. So, when the first officer saw that the plane was in ALT mode, he probably thought to himself, well, it can't be that bad. 
If it were truly dangerous, the plane wouldn't even be able to put that there. But the plane was able to put that there. So what could have been done differently to prevent this from happening again? Well, the pilots could have been more attentive. But the bigger thing here is that the first officer could have been a lot more assertive when taking control back from the captain. Since the plane was skimming along for a while, he knew what was happening. He should have called, I have control, a while back, but he didn't. And that probably came down to cultural issues. Being from a culture that is very hierarchical and one that places a lot of emphasis on respect for elders, you have a situation where the first officer might have hesitated to take control from the captain for fear of offending her. But in this case, everything worked out. Let's hope it always does. In your opinion, did you think that this could have ended in a crash? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.